Okay. Okay, so let me refresh this. Today, I'm going to do some AI improvement, some artificial intelligence stuff. And um, before I begin, let me show you how it works at the moment and what I intend to improve. So let me just start the game. in the background. Okay, so how does the AI work and what is the thing I'm going to improve? Well, if you just consider some sector like this one. So the player ship is here in the bottom right and there are two enemy ships here and here. And um, what they are trying to do is to go to this green area, which is where the player ship is. So if I just try to fly away, this green area will adapt and um, the enemies will try to follow me into the green stuff. So they will also try to avoid asteroids and other stuff. So this heat map takes into account both the position of the player as well as obstacles and dangers and other stuff that is on the map. So, as you can see, they are already quite effective at doing it. This guy is pretty much flying straight at me. But they are also very suicidal and very kamikaze-like in their behavior. So they will try to ram you. Um, and. Uh, this may be a bit overly aggressive for many situations. So what I would like to improve is I want to make them less suicidy. And in order to do this, I'm going to make a negative factor, put it into this formula which calculates this heat map, which prevents them from, pl from flying very close to me. Okay, let's do it. Fortunately, I didn't break it. Okay, so let's go to the AI code. And let's see how this works. So the AI um, is calculating this heat map, which is this tile value map, and based on this map, it will determine the course which travels to the location the fastest. Okay, and what I'm going to change is I'm going to make this negative modifier straight where the ship is in order to prevent them from crashing right in. 
Okay, so there is already this code which prevents them from crashing into each other. Uh, so first let's try changing this code so that it affects all chips and to see if this works and if this improves the behavior in a way we want. There is indeed a negative effect on these tiles around the player ship, but it's not quite correct, I think. Yeah, I want it to be right here in the center where the player ship is. But not around the ship. Okay. okay. modifier to the value map To be honest, it was some time ago when I wrote this, so I have to remember how I did it. Okay, so it is 64. Do we add to it? Okay, first of all, let's try adding something which is huge, just in order to understand how exactly it's working. get it. So the center tile where the player is is always green. I don't really get why this is the case. Uh, so how is this algorithm going? Actually. Wait, is this adding new stuff? I'm not sure.
Hmm. What is happening? It crashed. Okay, apparently this leads to the game crashing. David. <laughs> okay. Why is it not working? Okay, so I guess I have to understand what this algorithm actually does. It was some time ago when I've written it, but uh, I have to get back into it. Okay, so this is standard AI controller, which calculates the target it should go to. Okay. This get target function is okay. Is defined here in this okay. And here in this function, and this function generates generates this value map okay. And then it calculates the current position. Okay, and then it has a look which tile which is adjacent to its current position has the highest score. Okay. Okay, and then we go there. Okay, so basically we have to manipulate this value map in order to in order to change ship's behavior. What I don't quite understand is why this approach which I made here is not quite working. I think it should be correct, right? Uh, with this called okay, get value map. Ah okay. Well this is actually cached. So it's not calculated every frame, okay, right. Not right, right, right. Tile value map. Let's try to get mine. Ah, oh, this is really strange. Why is it, uh, why is it red in the set? Not not in the center, but around. I don't quite get it. Mm. Let's try it. It seems to be working for the other things. Why is it not working for the player? Okay, well, let's try it again. And think about it. Oh, it has 
a value of 64 for the player ship and it should decrease in every direction then. Why is it 60? Why is it not more? What was my, my rationale for this? increasing this value, okay. We try some larger values next. Hmm. Is there some limit here which is affecting everything? I mean the thing which is really strange is that it is working for the other ships. It's just not working for player ship. the scaling on this. Why can I not change this to say 80? And maximum is 80, okay. And this time map is added here. Ah, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. Okay, I get it. This was actually the wrong place to put it. Um, <laughs> hi, Bonkin. <laughs> this is actually not the value of the tile where it should go, but it is the value, the movement cost of traversing this specific Part. Okay, so instead of sh changing this, you should go into this function and change it here. Okay, this makes sense. Okay, 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 so let's copy this. Let's call this uh, avoid crashing. ships. So we traverse all the items in the world. We take all in the ship parts in the world and first let's let's try something simple. So we need to get the correct position of the of the ship part which is calculated like this and then we increase the cost or decrease the cost I'm not quite sure yet I think it should decrease the cost by 15 Okay, let's try it. I'm not quite sure if it's the correct direction, but we will find out.
Okay. Okay, so in this sector there are two friendly ships. Um, okay, it seems to be working. So now there is a, a darker, um, a darker, a darker part around this ship. Okay, so um, yeah, that should be it. Okay, so now let's make it a bit stronger. Let's try forty-five. And and afterwards we have to adapt this behavior according to the according to the type of the ship. So for example, I want a ramming ship to you know ignore this and instead um, have normal shooting ships um, take this into account more. So okay. An enemy ship with this. Okay, let's try it. It should be working. Okay, so afterwards we will try to improve this function. I'm just not, um, you know, it, it's very fast, it's okay for like a small sector around the ship but it's not very good um, because it doesn't really have a circle shape which should be used when calculating the distance from the ship okay yeah this looks good okay let's try how it works out so the enemy ships should be approaching us now. Let's put on God mode so that we don't get immediately wrecked. Um, and now they should approach us, but they shouldn't go just quite as far. Okay, so instead they are circling us. And occasionally they are firing into us in our direction. Okay. This is sort of working. Okay. Now, the unfortunate thing is that um, the resolution of this stuff is limited. So, as you can see, there are these little blocks which all have the same score. So, the ships will usually not, um, you know, there may be some situations in which the AI may be very bad. But I think in general it's looking quite fine the way it is. <laughs> Some reason this guy shot shot off his own thing. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. What do we do next? Well I want the behavior of the enemy ships to depend on their shape. So a ramming ship should be more, more you know, more likely to just fly at me and ignore this stuff. While these guys should be a bit more careful. Okay. Okay. So. So now, when um, applying this penalty for flying into the enemy ship. need to consider the amount of armor and the amount of weapons the enemy ship has. Okay, so let's have a look at the hangar. So it, there is already a 
algorithm which sort of calculates the armor speed and weapons rating of a ship okay it's depend on damage this ah, okay it's um it doesn't quite take the relative um damage that's the, the damage relative to the ship size into account so i guess we have to implement a new function to make this happen so how could we do it well i guess we could just um, look at the relation between between armor modules and weapon modules on a ship i think that might be a very good indicator of whether it is a ramming ship or it is um, a normal fighting ship okay so let's let's write a function to do this okay so let's make it a float and let's call it get um, get relative weapon ratio and uh, here we calculate the number of number of weapons and the number of armor or number of defense. Okay. And then we just return the number of weapons divided by number of weapons plus number of defense. Now we just need to calculate it. So we iterate through all the all the modules. Uh, actually, it would be more clever to um, to save this because it's sort of a sort of an expensive calculation. So let's just call it relative ratio. It here instead, let's put it here. Okay, okay, like this. And number of weapons, number of defense. Okay, so if it is a weapon, number of weapons increased by one and. Wait a second, abstract module. Um, mm -hmm. Command mode. Is category, get category, is category. Okay. Is category. Is category weapon. If it is of category defense, then number of defense plus plus. Okay, okay. So this should calculate rating for every ship. Okay, let's try it before we go on. So number of weapons. Number of defense. Ah. defense and the relative weapon ratio. Okay, let's see if it works. not working if both are zero obviously so if a ship neither has defense nor weapons okay then this is a case which we have to take into consideration um, so if this 
zero, then the Tiffrepton ratio is 0 0.5. Just some arbitrary value in the middle. Okay. Okay, so let's have a look at some ships. Okay. So if we take this ship. It has no defense and no. Okay. Why does it have no defense modules? Is it not called defense? I'm not sure. So if I add a weapon module, then it works. Huh? And now it it's also it's strange. Okay. I guess it was a bug with uh, huh? Ah, okay, I see. I guess it's just not working when the um, it's not working while the ship is being initialized. Okay, so let's just um, let's just make this conditional so that we do not run into problems later on. Okay, good. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to make this penalty. 45 depend on depend on this ratio which we have just calculated okay so this is the function which calculates the value map um, ah, okay one unfortunate thing is that this value map is stored for for each faction of ships Okay, so it doesn't work in the way I, I wanted it to work. At least not the way it is implemented at the moment. <laughs> so at the moment... Can it? Should it? Can it? Will it? Yeah, I just cached at this, at this point. Mm. So if you want, so the problem now is that each faction of ships, meaning that uh, each, so basically, usually all enemy ships are in one faction, and they share the same value map. So if I want to have the ships to have different behavior, for example, because the faction has ramming ships and uh, normal firing ships, I would have to somehow give them separate value maps. Okay, so I guess maybe this is not the correct position to put it because this is, will always be the same for ships of the same faction. So I guess I will have to put this penalty at some other point. Yeah, okay, 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 I know how to do it. So, get target, okay. Air controller. Okay, 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 okay. So instead of putting it at the place where we just were, we just have to apply this penalty here. Okay, yeah, that should work. That should work. Okay, so first of all, let's try if it really works. This is a bit problematic to debug because um, I don't think this will be shown, but we can just test if it uh, if it results in the behavior which we want. Okay. Maybe a bit problematic. Let's see. Okay. Let's put this stuff over here. Okay. 
Okay. So. Mm. Okay, so this function which we have used before only works for arrays, arrays of things. So instead of using an array, we have to do it manually. So, okay. Okay, it should be rather simple actually. Okay, so. So if this position, which is the position of the point which is tested, okay, x minus 1 is greater than, greater equals than x2, and x plus 1 smaller equals this. And the same for y values, then we decrease this value by 45. Okay, let's see if it works. So um, it should no longer be displayed now in this um, AI overview layer. But um, the ships should behave according to accordingly even nevertheless. So what is the problem here? Possible loss of precision. Float. Quite int, what float not? Okay, another problem. Let's do that. Okay. And cannot find a symbol faction. Okay. Um faction. Okay. I'm not sure if I fixed this one, but the other ones should be gone. Okay, apparently I did. shown here which is correct but she should not try to run me I hope okay the ship is turning around which is correct but it's trying not to run me at least <laughs> okay does seem to be working, sort of. <laughs> it's too bad that the equation... Oh, did it not? Did it not? Did it not work? Let's test it again. Oh. 
this is also not correct. Whoops. <laughs> Does the map not scale with this? Oh, oh wait, oh, did asteroids spawn outside of this? Whoops. <laughs> did asteroids spawn outside of this actually actual world layer? Okay. Uh, I'll have to have a look at the asteroids asteroid code in a second. But nevertheless. Ah, this is strange actually. Why is this not? Ah, I have to look at this later. Okay. I mean, one small problem is that um, while these ships they really no longer fly into you, but they don't really know what to do either. So they will just circle around and uh, come back to you a bit later. Um, hmm. Not quite sure how to do this best. Um, first of all, let's try to fix this asteroid, st asteroid stuff. So, the asteroids are spawning outside of the thing, and what's the cause of this? I'm not sure. Okay, when a map is generated, extent is set to 6. But apparently that was not the extent of the map which we had last time. Um, okay. Okay, new map. It should be six, I'm not quite sure. Um the red boxes are actually just the position of the um, of the um, enemy ships. They are a bit large, of course. So just need just uh, make them a bit smaller. Okay, they should be a bit smaller now, so that they don't just hide everything. Um, actually, I'm going to do this asteroid stuff later. It's not not that important at the moment and it sort of detracts from what we are trying to do. Okay, let's experiment a bit with how this works. Okay, so, so first of all let's try to see how it looks when I have a little bit more distance from you. So let's try instead of just uh, making this penalty around one square, let's make it about three. So now they should be, they should hold a little bit more distance to your ship. Let's see how if it works. And if it works, we can continue and uh, make this penalty depend on the type of ship the type of enemy, which will be nice. Oh no, uh, mm, uh, this, <laughs> this wasn't actually correct what I did. <laughs> Oops. So instead of making this stuff smaller, um, where are the boxes drawn? Render UI. 
hier. Äh, ist mal gesagt, Target. Okay. Okay. Ups. Either this guy is completely bugged out, or <laughs> they're not really sure what they're doing. Wait a second, let's test it again. Yeah, this seems to be broken, this uh, outer shape of the world. I'm not quite sure why. I'm not sure why. I mean, when. Well, <laughs> just a strange issue. Oh, but it has an effect on this, of course. Ah, it's annoying. <laughs> ah, was it just a grid which is not working? Which could also be the case. Well, I mean, the AI seems to be working. I mean, they are following me into this thing. Is it really working? It's very strange. Let me try to disable it to see the difference. Okay, so let's say x is 5 and x2 is 6. So x minus range 5 minus 3 is 2, 2 is louder than 6 is false. Okay. So instead, should be smaller then. So now x minus 3 is. Six, okay. But five plus three is not louder. Okay, I guess this is just this is just completely wrong. Okay. Okay. So if x is smaller than this or this is smaller than this or this is smaller than this. Just think about this. Okay, it's a pretty easy task, but still. So x is 5 and x2 is 6. So we want to not do this if x is smaller than 2 or x is smaller, uh, larger than 8. Okay, so if x minus range. Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay, so then we do not do it, otherwise we do it. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay, let's test it again.
here they come. <laughs> and if I approach, they should fly away actually. Um, that's not quite correct. It's really, it's really annoying that I don't, it's not displayed here. Okay, I need to sort of... I need to change the algorithm to show me to show me this correct map for each ship it's just um just very hard to do otherwise okay so yeah i went draw score is taken directly from this map so instead instead we have to make a new function where we calculate the score according to this new function Okay. Okay, X score for ship part SP and for position X and position Y. And we basically just do this. Okay. Okay, so this should work. And now the vendor needs to use this function instead of this stuff over here. So AI controller standard dot. Uh, is it correct? Mm. Okay, like this. Um, we take the AI of the ship, we use this function calc score, and we use a random ship part of this ship. Um, ship parts get first, or get, get ship part zero, and let's take the position x and y. No, it does not. Um, I guess we have to use this. Not sure. Uh, I don't want to get out of bounds of the map, which would result in a crash, so I'm not quite sure yet how I should do this. Okay, I guess we have to put this um, limitation here so it doesn't so it doesn't mess up everything. Okay. So basically, I have to make sure that um, in this line over here. I don't in the I don't uh, reference like a field which is out of bounds of these uh, these arrays. Okay, let's try it. Oops. Okay. Yeah, this isn't working. Okay. Um. I guess I need to use this matrix anyway just to get the size of the map. Okay. 
Information, which is fine. Which is fine. Okay, so AI.cakescot doesn't work either, apparently. Calc score ship part int int. Calc score ship part int int. What? <laughs> what? Okay, more box. I control standard vm dot length minus one. Ah, okay, we have to. Ah, okay, I see, I see. I see. We have to um, give this value map as a parameter because otherwise it would have to be calculated in each step, which would be incredibly slow. Okay, good. Over here, let's make sure that the order is correct. Let's go to the renderer and also give this matrix to this function. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Alfred. <laughs> Sexy load screen, ah, I guess. <laughs> Statement a controller standard. Yeah, I guess that is correct. Okay, it's just not correct indentation level. Okay, yeah. it should be solved. Um, this is, of course, a disadvantage of using like an indentation based language like. M Java, which I've written, um, it can always happen that things are just on the wrong indentation level, uh, or there are some extra spaces or whatever, and things get mixed up. Okay, cannot find symbol again. Abstract AI controller. Okay, this is AI controller standard, not abstract AI controller. Okay, okay. So it doesn't work with any kind of kind of AI controller. Okay. Mm. Mm. Actually, does this depend on the core on the ship? The, okay, I guess we could make it static actually. That should work. Okay, yeah, okay, so we don't really need the um, specific AI instance, we can just use the generic static function. Okay, let's try it. Now it should show us uh, whether this function is working as, ex as intended. the problem. Okay. Okay. I see. I see. 
Is that always the problem? Okay, in the x direction, it is correctly identifying where the ship is, but in the y direction, it is not. I'll just wait a second and see what the enemy will do. Okay, we will not try to come into this this part of the map. Otherwise, if we go here, what will he do? Will he try to get out? Ah, okay, as soon as he's in his zone, so to say, he will behave according to this original AI, which will just try to ram me until I'm dead. Okay, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Nice. So, first of all, let's correct this code. Y minus range. It's not a random. X plus Y plus range. Ah, okay. This should be or not and. Okay. It should be that. And. Uh, we can also try to... Let me try the following. Let me try the following. First of all, let's reduce this to 2. Reduce the penalty to minus 15. And let's do this code again. By the way, we can write a little bit better like this. And let's do it again range of one. Okay. So the reason why I changed this is now it should have two penalties. One for a range of one around the ship, which is the core of the ship, and one for range of two. So basically it should be a bit more nuanced for the enemy ship and um, they should uh, know what to do when they are close to you. Okay, let's test it. <laughs> well, the thing which I like about indentation um, only languages is um, usually if you do not have indentation based languages like Java. Um, you have brackets and you know other stuff which um, is the actual level at which the language will compile what you are trying to do but um, you also have the indentation which you do either because you do it yourself or because your IDE is doing it for you and I just found it to be sort of confusing if you have like contradictory things I think intuitively you will always go for indentation but, but in Java you could do things which um, work differently as than expected in this way, which I did not like. Okay, now it's correct in the vertical direction. And now when the ships come, they should try to fly away. Nice. Nice, very nice. Okay. I guess I guess the radius is a bit large, which is not so nice. Which we can test this later on. Um, <laughs> that guy. What I'm a bit afraid of is um, that the AI may be too easy now. I mean, it was sort of stupid in a way, it was just uh, crashing into you before this, but um, at the same time it was also sort of challenging, which I want to preserve, of course. Okay, first of all, let's decrease this radius from 3 from 2 and 1 to 1 and 0. 
Okay. Well, it should be a bit smaller, to, uh, a bit closer to your ship now. only applies to this closer part which should probably lead the ship a bit uh, think about it okay okay let's see what happens now That's good. Doing a good job, actually. Okay. Yeah, other than the fact that he was just trying to ram me, it was okay. So what are the other guys doing? That guys, yeah. Okay. Okay. sound actually. Okay, let's test it a few times to see if it is actually... Okay, first of all, let me make it lead the target a little bit, lead the player ship. So at this point... Let's just make it lead the uh, ship by one second. So, times the um, horizontal position and vertical position of the sh uh, velocity of the of the enemy. <laughs> Plus lead times p dot v y, which is the vertical velocity. And let's just test it a few times to get a feel for how the AI is working and um, how we should try to improve it next. Okay, we, we also can... Um, yeah, we should also... Um, we should also start to use this... Uh, relative weapon function in order to change the enemy behavior based on the ship type. Okay, now it should lead us a little bit. So if we fly here, for example, okay. Okay. Yeah, this should this should be better if we when we are moving. Okay. Okay. So let's see what happens. So this guy is approaching us and flying away. Okay, it's fine too. Ah, <laughs> this 
this red square is actually the um, the target of this AI ship. Okay, I see. Hmm. Um, I mean, obviously this is stupid. <laughs> it is uh, following this algorithm which uh, is written perfectly, but uh, if it happens to hit us, it's more or less just by chance, which is not very satisfactory. Let's, let's test a few more fights and see how long it takes the enemy to, to destroy us. Let's make it a bit easier by flying right into the... By not hiding in this asteroid field, for example. I'll just, just wait here and see what happens. Okay, so he's approaching. He's avoiding the asteroids, yeah. Um, actually pretty good. Well, if these guys don't <laughs> don't destroy each other, okay. Okay, okay. So it seems to depend on the type of ship if this is working or not. Obviously, it's easier to hit with the missiles. Okay. Okay, first of all, first of all, let's try to implement, to make this penalty depend on, depend on the number of weapons on the ship. So, uh, let's take the ship apart. Stats of this ship and then it is relative weapon ratio. Okay. And intuitively, the higher this weapon ratio is, the more distance they should keep. Okay. Let's take this and um, I guess multiply it by 2 and multiply it by. 15, which was the previous value, and in order to see what is happening, let's go to this, where it is all rendered, and um, and um, I want to change this in a way that it allows me to cycle through these ships. And currently, okay. Currently, if um, the render ship is null, which 
just fix the first chip and last chip and otherwise it is not okay which is a bit uh, I guess let's just test it since I'm not going to be using this um, debug layer very often probably let me just test it like this okay That is nice. There's a factory in this level which will um, spawn enemies which um, do not have any weapons on them. So for them, this penalty of webbing into the player ship should be zero, which is um, exactly what we want. So as you can see, it's creating these enemies which have no weapons. So let's see how it works out. Okay. First of all, we have this ship, which should not ram us. Okay, nice. Then we should have this ship, which shouldn't care at all. <laughs> I'm not sure if it did care. <laughs> if it if it doesn't care uh, or if it's it's just having difficulties trying to run me at all yeah but I guess they're trying to avoid me which is not what I want uh, or maybe it is just too crowded here at the moment and they are trying to avoid ramming each other which is preventing them from ramming me so let's try try to fly away and see what happens. Okay, so now this guy should... Yeah, I guess they are. Why are they not? No, this guy was turning around. Okay, I guess I need to... Um, I need to make this allow me to cycle through these ships, otherwise it is. It's not very nice. Okay. Okay, so if it is not null. If it is not null, we cycle through this list. And. Okay, A is not null. Last chip is, is S. And. Chip is S. Okay. If last chip is a render chip, then a render chip is S. Break and otherwise, <sighs> wait, how is this actually working? Okay, so if the render ship is null, then we just go into this loop and we just pick the first chip for which there is an AI defined. Otherwise, let's say the first chip is selected. Just go here and last chip is not null, it is AI random chip, okay. No. 
Oh, that doesn't make sense. So we go through this loop again. And... Last ship is Aaron. Okay. And we set last ship to this ship. Okay, but we do nothing else. And then we go through this loop to the second time. And now the last ship should be the render ship, okay. And we set the render ship to S, to the current ship. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Good. Should work. And otherwise, if we have gone through this loop and uh, finished, then the ship should be set to line. So let's just do it like this. Ship, render ship like this, render ship is null. Should work. It should work. Let's test it. Ah, hi, Battlefleet engineer. <laughs> How is your game doing? So, you've made your own Twitch account now? So, are you also going to stream a bit of um, Battlefleet engineer development? That would be great, actually. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I guess you should all check out Battlefleet Engineer, which is Metal Fusion's game. And which is like a fleet based version of um, Boss Constructor. Okay, so let's see. So apparently, this is not working. It should circle through these uh, ships, but it does not. Um, mm -hmm. So, okay. Last ship is last air render ship. Okay, so for the first ship, last ship should be null. And this should not be null. Okay, so it should just just um, go through this in the first iteration. Then last ship should be S, which is the first ship and in the second cycle. This should be true and go into this part and and then a render ship should be set to S, which seems correct to me, actually. Okay, let's, let's see what is going wrong here. Okay, let's lock S. Let's lock um, last air render ship. And um, let's lock last ship. Okay, good. Let's try it and see what the game is producing. Second, I need to disable this Open AI, Open GL profiling, which is just um, producing too much output at the moment. Okay.
Hey, why is it not working? Um, <laughs> okay, so as this default chip, which seems to be the first chip, the last chip is null, okay. Last air vendor chip is this, which is the same. Okay, and then the next cycle is the second chip. Not a default chip for some reason. It's really strange. Okay. Nevertheless, last chip is this, which is also a render chip. And it should cancel out and. Okay. Actually, it's strange. Why is it not working? Ah, okay, okay, so ah, this is actually a special case because there's a space station which um, is defined in a different way than the other ships, which is uh, not very fortunate, but still. It sh should still work though. Last air in ship like this. Okay, <laughs> I don't want to spend too long on this, but it's obviously sort of strange. So um, instead, I'll just do a very dirty hack. I mean, this isn't a function which is available to the player later on anyway. So instead, I'm just picking a random ship from the world. And uh, if the AI is null, then the. Um, so AI is null if it is the player ship, for example. And. Um, Otherwise, it is set to this uh, ship which was randomly chosen. Okay, that should work actually. Um, second, let me highlight the ship which is currently rendered. Uh, where is it? Okay, if runner ship isn't zero, then. All the ships. Um, no, just for this ship. Okay. Only ship. Only ship parts. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see your stream. <laughs> it will be very interesting for me. I've never um, used XNA and uh, it's been a long time since I've used uh, languages other than Java, so I'm really, really interested to see.
how your code is going. Now we can just um, click this button until we randomly get the ship which we want. Okay, nice. Okay, so now we've got this guy. This guy should try to avoid ramming me. And we have that guy over here, which shouldn't care. Okay, but he still cares, which is, which is wrong, of course. Okay. What does he? Yeah, he cares about it, which he should not. Okay. So apparently this, this ratio which we calculated early on doesn't seem to be working correctly for some reason. It should work actually. So for some reason it is not. Penalty ship stats relative weapon ratio. Okay, let's have a look at this and see what happens. Relative weapon ratio 0 0.6. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, why is it always 0 0.6? Wait. Let's calculate it. Okay, for this guy, wait. This guy has two weapons and no defense module. So actually, it should be weapon ratio of one. So obviously, it's not working. Let's see. Uh, SP2 chips dot score. So either this calculation is wrong. Number of weapons divided by number of weapons plus number of defense it should actually be correct. Either this calculation is wrong or 
the wrong ship is displayed at this point. Ah, okay. Ah, okay, okay, okay. This was a mistake. It was taking the um, relative weapon ratio of <laughs> of the player ship, which is the second ship which is used here. Okay. okay. We should solve that. Okay, so so now we have a penalty of fifteen for this guy. Let's count. He has two weapon modules and two armor modules. So it should be should be zero point five times two times fifteen, which is correct. Okay, try another guy with it. Okay, nice. Now we have this factory, to the factor of zero, which is great because it has no weapons. And let's just see if we can get... Okay, we have no ramming ships on this map, okay. This guy has a penalty of 10 because it has a lot of armor, okay. So it will be more likely to ram you, which is nice, okay. See if we can find a guy with um, 30. Okay, 30 is very high, which is for this guy, which has no armor. Okay, nice, 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 nice. So this guy will be really careful about not ramming into you, while the other guys um, do not um, use quite such a deep penalty. Okay. Just try a few different enemies. See if it's consistent. What do we have here? This guy. This guy. Which um, this guy should have a very big penalty because it only has weapons. This is a friendly guy. <laughs> it should have this test. Thirty, okay. Okay, I think it's working. I guess the penalty may be a bit high in general, so I'll try to reduce it next. And um, more importantly, let's try 10 here instead. More importantly, I need to think of something for the shooting enemies. And um, I guess I have to differentiate the way the AI behaves depending on the distance to the enemy. So. Um, as soon as the enemy is not in targeting range or in weapon range, it's actually the correct strategy to, you know, just fly at it and use the algorithm which um, is currently implemented. But um, as soon as the um, ship is in weapon range, well, what should it do? I'm not sure. 
Um, so I'm guessing when it is in range, it should the ship should stop moving and just um, rotate in a way that makes it face um, ah, it aligns its weapons with the ship. Okay, so let's try it. But before I do that, I would like to make a little tweak. And the tweak is that um, I want the penalty to be, yeah, like, like this. So ships which have um, ships which have up to 40% percent, percent no ships which have um, up to 60% armor or at least 60% armor should not use this penalty at all so webbing ships should um, or even ships which have a lot of armor should not really care about ramming into you which is probably the correct way to do it which, okay and next uh, maybe point point four is a bit too. Let's take point two. Okay, and next I will make um, the air high behavior switch depending on the distance to the current enemy. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I should be able to, to really see the difference right now. Okay, nice, 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 nice. Okay, so let's have a look. Execute fire. Get ship parts in weapon range. Execute flight. Okay. this uh, flight function is always executed in the same way regardless of uh, the distance to the next enemy so I will change this and uh, I'll introduce two modes let's just make a uh, mode um, fly to enemy which is mode 1 and mode target enemy is mode 2. Okay, next we will make a function which um, determines the mode which we should do. Um, and uh, in order to do this, there is already a function which um, 
Oh, okay. Which um, calculates the ships which are in weapon range. So we do not need to really um, calculate this again. Let's just see how it works. Okay. Distance, speed, fire, maximum weapon range. Okay. Actually, we already have a function which um, can calculate if an enemy is in weapon range, which is great. Okay. So, ship parts in weapon range. And we just um, turn if ship parts in weapon range is empty. Then would fly to enemy, otherwise would target enemy. Nice. Okay. And let's see if it works. So let's just make a very simple thingy here. Um, subspace drive, inertia, mine layer. Okay. So, get mode is get mode. the mode is fly to enemy and we just do the same thing which we've done before and if the mode is target enemy then just for a start we just um, disable all drives okay yeah that should be that should be working Or we could even activate the inertia absorber, which would be very sweet. Uh, but uh, mm, it depends. Me. Uh, actually, I'm not sure how the inertia absorber um, works when you are trying to rotate your ship. I have to test it at some point. Okay, so let's see if it works. So now the ships should um, approach us until they are in weapon range. And when they are, mode target enemy. And then they should just stop. They should just deactivate their drives. And um, yeah, nice. When that is working, we can um, modify the function so that it rotates in order to face the enemy. I'm really interested to see if it's working. I'm not quite sure. It, it seems a bit too easy. Okay, so now if you just stand here, this guy should come and yeah, <laughs> and it stops flying. Okay, next ship. Come here. Okay, so 
Okay, so first of all, we need a function which um, gets us the newest chip. Let's call it get newest enemy. And um, we again use this list of um, all the chip parts, which are in range. Get newest enemy chip part. And um, let's just make a very very short function. Um, Okay, so we need a reference to our own chip. Chip has a weapon range. Okay. function should um, give us the nearest enemy ship part. Okay, Okay. I should um, clarify at this point that um, every ship can consist of several ship parts. So each ship part um, is, you know, individually flying around and is simulated as an individual object. And um, the AI will be called for each ship part separately. So if you have several ship parts in a ship, they should all be simulated correctly. Ah, okay. But this should, this is okay. 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 I will do this in several steps just because it's really really hard actually. <laughs> um, in the first step I want to um, yeah first let's have a look at the current rotation of the ship part and next let's um, calculate this um, nearest enemy. How did I call it? Get Get nearest enemy ship part, sp and ship parts in weapon range. So weapon range, okay. And um, hmm. and okay. It's already calculated the angle. Which again is probably I will probably get it wrong the first try. So enemy dot py minus p dot py x is x, okay. And let's just have a look at these. Actually, we can already try, try, try it. Okay. So first of all, let's make a very naive approach. This 
is probably probably wrong. But um, basically this should be it. I mean we can make it a bit more sophisticated later on. But um, if our rotation is... Ah, I guess this is uh, incorrect already <laughs> without even trying. Um, what's the problem here? Get mod. Okay. It's also okay, actually. Uh, shooting is the optimal strategy for fast and nimble chips. Yeah, you are right, actually. Um, I guess for fast and nimble chips, the best strategy would be the one which the interceptors use, which is just to fire a shot and then fly away immediately. And um, yeah, I, I'll keep this in mind. I don't think um, this will be something which um, I can tackle today, but um, it's definitely some, something I should keep in mind in the long run. Um, okay, so what do we expect? So the ships should approach us as, as usual, and when they get into a diff into firing range, they should um, stop and they should try to rotate in a way that makes them face us. <laughs> 